episode 548 Brain Candy Podcast. We have a video version available if you're so inclined on patreon.com slash brain candy. Or you can just I should put, I should listen put to it. I'm playing with something and, and, and I feel what like is my it? ADD, I, I, like it's loud. And I, I just, my mind, sorry, that was like an ADD moment. And now we're on I'm video. Sorry. I'm like, what are you doing, Sarah? I'll Anyways, allow it. Yes, I cut um, you off. So you're doing a beautiful the- intro. <laughs> how the hell are you? I'm really good. Mm-hmm. I like, you know, I, I feel very calm and very at peace. It was a little bit challenging to get uh, back into the swing of things with work because, like, you go on vacation and it's so nice and wonderful, but the rest of the world is like, that's me snapping here. We need yeah. you, and you got, like, a whole bunch of shit to get back to. So that was a thing. And, yeah, uh, yeah now it's like, you need, you know, everybody kind of needs, like, the vacation from the vacation thing, but then, like, you get back, and I don't know. It's well, it's like kind of a motion, good time. stage motion. One of those things that work. <laughs> One of those laws of physics. One of those laws. I think it's a good time of year to do that, though, because, you know, like, uh, even though you're not in sure. school... The back For to sure. school, it's kind of like a new. Suze, the, I, it, that makes so that makes tons of sense. I don't know if it's because their back to school stuff is like at the freaking, uh, um, you know, what's it called? The the Target, mall, like Target. Yeah, the, yeah, the only place I go, <laughs> Target. Um, but like, it's got me in the mood to redo all of my files yeah, in my fun. file cabinet, and I like I the other night came up with. Like, the most obvious and brilliant way to organize my files that I don't know why I didn't see before. And it was like, oh, my gosh, duh, do that. So now I'm, like, real excited about it and is exactly what I'm going to do after this. So crazy you even say that. That's You're in my brain. Like, it's probably affecting your energy. You're probably just, like, chomping at the bit to get started. Get yeah, that and label maker like, out. Mo- you know how it like motivates you to it motivated me when I was in school to like take really good notes that first week to do all my homework and turn it in. Like I was like using new pencils. So I'm gonna like do the same thing, and I know that I will just jam through all those notes I need to do, do all the things on my to do list I need to do, finish up with all the stuff that I have loose yeah. ends. Like blah 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 blah. That so was it feels a like fun, that. fun feeling. Lincoln wanted to know, because I told him that you skipped a grade. He oh, wanted yeah. to know which grade it was. I said Twelfth. fourth. Oh, oh, 12? Yeah. yeah. It was the last one. You were like, I'm good. Yeah. <laughs> well, did you, like, skip it, or did you just take a GED and call it a day? GED and call it a day. But technically, I had all my credits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. So, yeah. Oh, my I gosh. I was picturing you, like... Everybody. Skipping, you know, when you're like Lincoln's age, like nine years old, and be like, "Peace out, um, see you fuckers yeah. later." No, I <laughs> took some. I took like the the, you know, the upper division classes, yeah. but I never skipped a grade. But that does sound like something like braggy younger Sarah would go around saying to people. <laughs> no, I mean, I could just see you being like, "Listen, this is too easy for me. I gotta like." Move yeah. on here, people. That's pretty easy. For you me. guys are dead weight. Yeah, first grade was. I remember that being like, "Oh my god, are we doing like? Can we? Gosh. Can we? Can we?" Can I never we go? had that feeling ever. I was never like, "This is so easy." Never. It was fun. Learning was fun. That's I think nice. because like my mom, like I was the old. We were in very different growing up situations. Yeah. You know, and like my mom had the time, and and I was the oldest, and she was really putting a lot of energy into like creating that and like fostering it. that in That's me a good and thing. she was like let's see basically like what experiments i could do on my child to make them i don't know smart or whatever no I, she even I like went it. so far as to feed me only liver for like the first because it was like really high in iron she like for like a significant amount of time she fed me a lot of liver so i got a lot of whatever vitamin is in that how old are you do you think baby like as soon like baby like this is baby food Oh my God! She like, is like while the brain is developing, like under two situation. Holy smokes! Like, Sally. Where first off of breast milk. She, hey, it worked. 
yeah. So what? And then it was like, then you were on the fast hands track. Off. <laughs> hands <laughs> off from then on. She did her job. Now yep, you do yep, yours. Yep. Wow, yep. that's crazy. Put a lot of work in in the beginning, and then it was like, okay. Wow. Go. Wow. Wow. Okay. It worked. So. Uh, okay. Didn't sk- so yeah. So you can tell them twelfth grade. Just tell them every yeah. grade's important though. <laughs> And tell them that I, I wish I didn't. Really? Yeah, because I feel like I, 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 I should have stuck around for, like, the regular high school experience. And I wish I were a little more... I wish I were more confident in myself so that I could feel more connected to others. How do you think you could have achieved that, though, like, at that age? Hmm. I mean, you really had the cards stacked against you. Yeah, I couldn't have done it alone. It would have been like, you know, different kind of support and resources. And it's so funny because you were an achiever, but you had maybe like some self esteem issues, and I was a total like mediocre, non achiever. But thought I was fine. That's. I feel (laughs) like that's kind of how it works. Like that. That's. That is. I guess so. I I just started reading, believe it or not, a Brene Brown book. I didn't know she wrote it when I began. Um, wow. I just had it on my list. I don't know why. And I got it from the library. And then I was like reading it. And I'm like, wait a minute. Wait a minute. <laughs> and I looked and it was her. Anyway, it's about being a perfectionist and like why you shouldn't do that. And um, <laughs> why you shouldn't do that. Because I can see what you're saying, which is like, it's almost like that quest mm-hmm. for perfection or achievement is mm-hmm. born out of feeling like you're not enough. And right. I have it now. Don't worry. I caught up. <laughs> but at the time, I was like, I am fine. I'm great. How do you think you got that? I mean, I got to give credit to Peg. I mean, where else would I have gotten? God, both of our mothers cow. in this situation. Yeah. I just thought I am, I'm fine and funny and... Nice. I didn't care that I had acne. I didn't care about how I looked. Man, that's great. I don't know. More importantly is how I lost it, which was called road rules. (laughs) (laughs) And being on television. Which is called road rules. And have everyone tell you (laughs) you aren't enough. Um, You know, because you get that feedback that you never got of like what people think of you. And that can, you know, <laughs> be problematic. Yeah. Um, <laughs> they stole your sunshine. And yeah, but I feel joy. like you went on the show and it made you feel good about yourself because, like, you realized you were super so strong like, and athletic. Wait a and- second. <laughs> All this shit I thought about myself is a lie. Other people do think I'm cool. Okay, so that made you feel like I'm cool enough to be on MTV. Yeah. I kind of felt like a fucking... Can it or big F you to all those people in like high haters. school who are like, you're a loser. And I was like, oh, yeah, loser. They, you are watching on TV. Yeah. Get I out like of that here. You, I like that. It, it felt very um, vindicated. What's validated? What's yeah, that word probably validating. Yeah. Well, good for you. I'm glad that happened yeah. for you. You more than it. more than validating, though. It felt kind of like a like I don't know. And I sometimes I wonder if the narrative that I have in my head of a high school and junior high experience where I was like a real oddball and like targeted by, you know, and like bullied and it was like so traumatic or all this stuff is one that I've kind of like, I don't know, amplified in my memory or if it re- like, was it really? Cause I remember specific certain things, but if you look at that over like the whole experience and I throw in like the positive ones and the good friends I have and like the friends that, you know, I'm, I'm still friends with today that from that time, I feel like it's just like maybe regular. (laughs) Really? I mean, is it just, well, I don't know for sure. Is it just like kids being like teenagers? I definitely got loogie spit on me. That's pretty, I think that's extreme. Okay. 
That's, that's awful. But like, oh, like only like a little, well, a, okay. <laughs> a little loogie. Just a, no, I mean like it happened a few times. Yeah. And it, the chubby bunny thing, that really happened. So yeah, I mean like there were a few moments, but all in all, you know, I don't know. <laughs> maybe it's not, maybe it's like. I love when to, you like, work revisit. through stuff like right I'm in like real time. You saw that happen. (laughs) (laughs) Well, if you want some validation, may I suggest BetterHelp, which is an online uh, counseling service that you can access anytime you wish from your computer or phone or tablet. Does not require you to have to actually go into an office, which is nice. And if you're struggling with depression or anxiety or relationships, all this stuff. Or maybe you hear us talk about some things on here, and you're like, I would love a professional to help me learn (laughs) some of these skills. Instead of these bozos. You can do that. (laughs) That's so true. And this is convenient and uh, licensed counselors and also not intimidating because you can do it at your own pace and your own schedule and all that. You don't even have to be on video. You can do it on the phone. Yep. Yeah, yeah, it's so flexible. I love a phone sesh. <clears throat> Do you? To give and to receive. Yeah, I would agree with that. I, there should be more of that going on. Yeah, because I feel like I can, like, talk better when I, like, yeah, takes off the added, like, pressure of somebody looking at you. I'm into that. <laughs> that so, is yeah. so true. We want when you I'm, to start. Uh, when I'm in a session, like, when I'm my the client the patient not when I'm the or the client yes. yes yes we want you to start living a happier life today as a listener you get 10 percent off your first month by visiting betterhelp.com slash brain candy join over 1 million people taking charge of their mental health again that's betterhelp com slash brain candy um that was fun talking about that okay i watched a documentary that i like now i feel like i hear an echo Ooh, on my end yeah, it's not mine, not me. A little bit. Talk. Go ahead and talk. Hello, hello. Yeah, a little bit. It just came up. I'm on airplane mode. <laughs> I'm on how, airplane mode. How poor it, poor well, that Sarah. Was one thing Adam really I know. Made sure to he really kept talking about that. I'm like, she does that already. Maybe it's okay. I'm going to let it go and pretend like I okay. didn't notice. So, guys, if you're listening <laughs> yeah. and you hear an echo, don't tell Adam. Don't tell him. Shh. And, Shh. and you don't need to message me about it because I hear it too. <laughs> and we, we're good. And we're working on it. And But not really. Okay. You know. Uh, I saw a documentary that I liked and it was on Amazon Prime. And it was Val. It was about Val Kilmer. Oh, yeah. Have you heard this of it? This one popped up. I Tell recommend me. it. Well, I'm not a big, like, Val Kilmer stan or anything, but, uh, like, he's interesting and handsome and stuff. So I was like, and then I started, you don't think he's handsome? Did I, you see Top Gun? I think he was handsome. Well, yeah. I'm. I, that's kind of what I meant. I think that... He, he looks a little different now. He's... Time has has been interesting to him. He, yeah, he's sixty one and he has throat cancer. <gasps> oh, so I, I think that. that has okay, caused a lot of like something. the physical changes. Okay, yeah, because like yeah. his body seems like it's the same size, but he's um, it almost is like he's retaining water maybe in his face. So his I face looks it was different. Maybe plastic surgery decisions. No, I don't think okay. so. Okay. Yeah. That changes things. So now I have more compassion and understanding. And yeah, no. I think yeah. a lot of people weren't aware because it's not like he... He grew up Christian scientist and, like, sometimes they have a, an odd relationship with medicine. Um, sometimes yeah. they do the old, like, pray instead of, like... Uh-huh. Go so get it taken care of. I think he's been hesitant to, like, talk about his ailments yeah. that's my theory he didn't say Got that in it. the film but um he yeah he has throat cancer and it's caused him to kind of like not even really be able to talk he he has a trach whatever they call it yeah, tracheotomy tra- yeah and tra- so tra- when he talks he has to put like a finger in the hole of the tube and it's they have subtitles like you can't wow. really understand him for an actor and somebody who's like that's a big identity right. loss and change there. Yeah, so that was really Ooh. compelling because 
I didn't. I knew that he had some sort of health issue, but I wasn't sure what the specifics were. So that was kind of shocking. And they had his son narrate the film as Val Kilmer because they have a similar speech oh, wow. and voice. So well, that's cool. They that's show it. Like they acknowledge Wood, it. Uh, uh, Tom Hanks's brother, who does the voices of Woody in all of the cartoons and yes. video games, because he wants yeah. his brother to have work. Right. And I, like I always say, this is why siblings make great musicians in the same yes. band. Yes. Because it just works. For sure. Oh, gosh. I should have one, to sing for me. The, well, he's one of these people that was always filming from like the 80s on. Yes. So there's always. a great um, archival uh, footage from his childhood and then from all the movies like behind the scenes. So that made it really compelling. But the thing was that, he one of the ones in The Outsiders? I don't think so. He was in okay. like Top what Gun was his, was his first, first big movie. Top Gun was the first one. Yeah, You're Dangerous Iceman. Yeah, and then yeah, of course he was Batman at one time, and he was in like Wyatt Earp with Kurt Russell. That was actually yeah. a popular movie at the time. But yeah. um, and then he I got think this- that came out right around the time where my little bro- when my little brother was born, whose middle name happens to be oh. Wyatt. I think that was a big yes. moment for Wyatt. Yes, it was. <laughs> um, but, like, he got a reputation as being difficult to work with and stuff like that. But um, he, but I think that's because he was a method actor. And yeah, I was saying during the film that I think there's a reason why the only people we know of that are method actors are white men. Like, if a woman or a person of color embodied the role for the entirety uh-uh. cuckoo crazy they, they would be you institutionalized up. yeah it's what what uh um oh my god what's her name who shaved her head she was dating oh demi moore no no she was dating i want to say she was she's a lesbian she was dating i want to say she was dating ellen for a while but oh, maybe not Porsche. no yeah and hache Anne Heche. Yes. She seems like method actory. And maybe or, there's a little bit of that or that. Um, also, uh, uh, the other one who's just like my mom. This is a really fun game to play of what the heck is the word Sarah's thinking of. Yeah. Oh, gosh. By the way, like an aside, Barry was talking to me about the episode that I did with you know, when I talked about our trip and he was like, it's funny. I was like finishing your sentences when you couldn't mm-hmm. think of it. I'm like, so is everyone. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Welcome can't. aboard. I don't think that's what he meant, but, um, <laughs> but in my mind I was like, yeah, I know I do this a lot. Like, um, Welcome but to the woman who guess. won, uh, she was in nomad land and she's, Oh, you know, yeah. What is her name? Uh, and was she in Fargo? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> We're terrible people. It is. Yes, I'm never going to get it. She's real good actress. She won Academy Award for Best Actress two years in a row. All right, let me look it up. Fine. What is her name? And no, I pronounce it wrong every time because I pronounce her last name. I like add Francis Mar- McDormand. Yes. <laughs> Francis. And I always call her McDermott, but that's not it. It's McDormand. McDermott. Yeah. What about her? She's a method act. She seems oh. me- like a method actor type, and she's, I think, like, you know. I really don't think there eccentric. are any. I think you're just saying good actresses or crazy, like Anne Hayes is just. <laughs> <laughs> and so that kind of ah! illustrates my point. But um, the part that was really compelling to me about the um, documentary was that you know now that he can't act. He's sort of forced, I don't know, to just do like Comic Con type stuff. You but know, like. Why, why forced? Well, that's why I said kind of, because it's like, I don't know what his financial situation is if he feels like he has to. Um, he did say that sometimes he gets in a real bad place because he doesn't want to do these gigs because um, it feels humiliating. But then he says... There's got to be a financial obligation <clears throat> to... It must be. Yeah. Because he did... His dad kind of screwed him with money and stuff. So it might be that he, like, really doesn't have a lot going on. 
But he hmm. said that it tends to not be humiliating and that it actually um, is a joy to meet people that are enthusiastic about his art. I think that that is, there's a lot of truth to that. And I think it ha- it's kind of like that perspective thing of how you go in and how you see it. And if you can connect to one person, you know, who get something from it or somebody says something like that and you can see the beauty in that it's kind of like is it what my high school experience <laughs> <laughs> nobody spit loogies on him which you know was right. great it's like what a win i can see though how because he said that's the perception is that if you aren't getting any roles whether it's for his health reasons or otherwise that it feels like you're a loser and that everyone is celebrating your past and you wish that they could What's, celebrate the future. Is oh. I was going to say, like, what's wrong with that? I think maybe we need to just, you know, in a, there's, this, there's so many layers to that to, mm. when you really think about it. And you think about, like, how we're in this individualistic society that really pushes, like, you know, this like productivity all the time. Yes. Yeah. All the time. And, and you're measured by how much like achievement and success is this like very, I don't know, like materialistic and, and three dimensional kind of like goal or Mm -hmm. or measure whatever. Well, the entertainment industry in particular it's always like, what yeah. are you working on? What are you working on? What's next? What's next? Yeah. And so when you live in that world and, like, what's wrong with just having, like, if if anybody else had a resume like that, and he's getting older, and he's sick, just retire. Just, like, mm-hmm. it's okay. You can be, you can just, like, the hard thing is, is if they really financially, like, yeah, enjoy the next phase. Like, I like it's okay to do the, I don't know, not, not reunion tour, but like the, hey, this is who I was autograph yeah. signing and celebrate yeah. that. Like, why not celebrate who we were and, and, you know, the fact that we were great at all at any time is kind of awesome. That's why I love a one-hit wonder. I'll you do you, love a one-hit wonder. <laughs> I'll tell you what else I love, and that is WordTune, which is the AI-powered writing tool. But here's why it's magical. It, like, it's truly magical because they, it understands what you mean. Yeah. Like, how does it do that? I AI, don't know. AI, Susie. AI! It knows what you mean, and then it'll offer writing suggestions that will help you get better clarity and compelling uh, content with your writing, which is really, really fun. I love anything that helps my writing. You know what I mean? Because as good as you might think you are, you could always be better. This Thanks to the true. robots. Yeah. Um, and it's so important now. You know, you ever get oh like... And Susie, not all of us, I'm sorry, but not all of us are writers like you. Some of us are just regular and we need all the help we can get. <laughs> and this is like wonderful tool for people who are all different levels of Yeah, writers. maybe you feel insecure and you think maybe you could use a boost and this will help you be more efficient, publish better work. Um and and it can help your writing in general. I find that myself that you get into habits as as a writer too. For sure. And this can help you kind of notice those things and it'll impress your customers, maybe your brand, if you have a small business, stuff like that. Um, but we have a deal. You can uh, try WordTune for free at wordtune.com slash brain candy. You, are you looking to elevate your entire team's writing? Our listeners can get a discount for their team today at wordtune.com slash brain candy word tune improves writing efficiency up to four times better faster writing means better business start writing with word tune at word tune.com slash brain candy it improves performance on any project everything from internal emails to press releases sales outreach to customer service support and so much more you can use word tune anywhere you're writing online including google Docs, slack 
Outlook Web, and WhatsApp. Come on. Come on. Um, Okie dokles. So that's good. I recommend that on Amazon Prime. And it's free on Amazon Prime if you're a member. Yeah. Um, I love a good doc. Did you hear about Barry, not your Barry, Barry the Central Park Owl? This was um, an owl that was like, I don't know why, but it was very um, social. Well, <laughs> it's funny you even mentioned that because last night there was a freaking owl in my neighborhood that was so loud. Yeah. I was like, and it went on for so long. Was it named Johnny Bananas? Maybe. <laughs> well, because as soon as you said loud and like would. That's the first thing that pops into your head. <laughs> yeah. And wouldn't uh, shut up. I was like, I know people like that. In fact. In fact, would not stop hooting. So, yes. Hooting. <laughs> and I thought like it's going to be, it's only a matter of time before somebody in the neighborhood comes out and like yells like quiet out there or something like that. it felt like that was going to happen like it went on for so long i'm like this is ridiculous do you so like yes, owls i can or imagine you like- a friendly or pesky owl this owl was just like really tolerant of humans which i think is so cute um and unfortunately well barry was the kind of owl that helped people during the pandemic i think that's why this became a thing is that like you know especially in the early days when people were like still nice and everything Uh uh-huh at the pandemic um i think they would go out from their new york apartments and sort of go to central park and then they would see this owl and it was a thing anyway the owl died because uh it had a it's not funny it had a collision with a maintenance truck oh susie i know this is not where I th- I was like all on board, adorable owls. I'm like feeling all like creative and inspired. I was like, oh, I'll draw a little owl picture. That would be cute for a doodle. And yeah. then she's like, oh yeah, also it's dead. Yeah, you missed your chance. R.I.P. Um, oh, Barry. Barry, and it's causing like there was a whole article in the New York Times about its passing. His passing. Well, I get it. Yeah, and um. It was describing the behavior, so it said that every evening, an hour or so before dusk, a group of seven or eight Barry followers, including this these people that they interviewed, would gather in the ramble to At watch. At first I thought you meant birds, like other owls. <laughs> no, like people they interviewed for the I article. was like, his little grizzle posse? <laughs> I'm so glad they were spared. <laughs> these human friends would Different come out posse. to watch Barry's pre-fly out prep which i didn't even know was a thing it would preen sounds they say her feathers so i guess barry is a girl preening her feathers sharpening her talons and doing a few owly yoga stretches stop yes animals are the cutest and then it said (laughs) barry would then invite her humans or so it seemed to accompany her on the first segment of her nightly hunts flying slowly from perch to perch with occasional pauses in between as if eager not to let anyone fall behind. After 45 minutes or so, she would take off on her own, soaring off into the air as her human friends headed home. I love her. I know. When she's kind of a show-off like us. Like, yeah, why um, did you Why did you get me all... Why did you make me fall in love and then just take her away? I'm so sorry. I know. Well, I think that's how everyone felt when she passed, too. It was well, just like... It was like... Here's the takeaway. Yeah. We need to connect to more animals. Yeah. And... They're not every, all so social, though. My goodness. I don't know, but I feel like maybe if if the ener- collective energy of a bunch of people went towards one little animal, then they could be very social. Well, I do think that things like this, when you have been... You, even in Central Park a couple years ago, there was that really beautiful mallard... Did yes, you, the yeah. beautiful duck, the, yeah. the sexy duck. We talked about duck. him. Yeah, and I think like those things can ignite in people who might otherwise not feel this way a sense of like connection with animals. So it's yes. not all bad news. It's not all bad. But people are heartbroken, Sarah. 
I get it. I would be really sad about that, too. Speaking of, how's Bo? She's okay. I am noticing that she is definitely blind at night. Like, she had two... I thought it was just an accident one time because she kind of fell down the stairs a little bit at night when we were going to the bathroom and she like races down like i'm like who are you racing and every now and then she's like i got it but she, not like she's racing to go to the bathroom she races and then goes to the bottom of the stairs and then spins around like i'm supposed to be chasing her she's like just worked up yeah okay. she's all worked up and so she was going down the stairs and i thought this was one of those times and she kind of tripped over herself and luckily it was only like four steps four steps but she was like oh like all shaken oh, no. and then there was another time where she was going up the stairs and she like kind of fell and i think it's because the light has been out in on the stairwell so like i i just didn't turn it on and well because it's out and um so yeah, there wasn't the light there as there usually is, and so but I mean there was like enough, like the neighbor's lights on. My, you know, you'd think. Did but dogs now, get cataracts? Yes, and oh. she definitely has. She's got the cloudy eye mm. and the whole thing. So that, and then um, I'm gonna have to put her on some uh, medication for some incontinence kind of stuff because she's like a little a little leaky. But as soon as I put her on like a, a medication, or she gets like a little supplement that it fixes that, fixes that right up. She's just an old lady. That fixes it. Oh yeah. Do they have yeah. that for humans? I think so. I mean, not that I need it. I'm just asking Eventually, because it, yes. it seems like that's a big problem. Yeah. Okay. Well, good to know. Yeah, but you know, she's just my little lady. I love her. How's Mr. Miyagi? <laughs> the cats over here are good. Everything's Both. ship-shaped. Ethel, too. But thank God. They're because I was so see- funny. I- <laughs> They're, They're the like one- a team that hunts. Yeah. One of them pushed the other one to be, you know how we have the balcony? And yeah. she pushed the other one off and Ethel was hanging on for dear life. <laughs> no. I watched you climb up and like, it was no, like that movie that's cliffhanger. So funny. <laughs> it really oh was. What, did, did she hold a grudge? No. Was there bad blood? No. We could learn a lot from cats. And we could, we could also learn a lot about investing on public.com, yes. which I'm so into. Um, if you haven't tried it, I highly recommend public.com because you can invest in stocks. And it, yeah, you know, you can learn about what everyone else is you know, already doing, which is investing their money and making money, passive income. Make your money, make little money babies. Yes. And I love that this site has so much more, or I should say app, has so much more um, diversity and inclusion. And I think that that is so important. And you can, you know, connect with other people on there as well. So if you're on there, you can find me. I just think it's a great system because you can get education about your portfolio and uh, start investing and get cooking. And it can feel intimidating, but this is such an easy way to do it. And you can use our code BRAINCANDY when you download the app to let public.com know you're coming from the Brain Candy Podcast. And you'll get up to $50 in free stock to get started in growing your portfolio. So even just if you want to do that. Like, just to see, like, what's all the fuss about? And then there's no risk or anything. It's valid for U.S. residents 18 and over, subject to account approval. See public.com slash disclosures, not investment advice. Um, But I love it. I think it's so great. Okay. So anyway, RIP, bury the owl. Bury the owl. Um, Okay. I read I do. I do believe that, like... That owl was definitely putting on the show for the humans. Isn't it funny, though, how, like... Animals do that. And and they have different personalities. And some might be more hostile or afraid of humans, while others are like, yeah, come here, come watch me. I'm so cute. Just like people. Owls are people, too. Um, There was a great article in the New York Times about the cotton tote bag crisis. That was actually the title of the article. Cri- is it a crisis that we have them or a crisis? Oh, it's, it is kind of. 
Didn't we, remember when we were talking about the things that you're doing that are bad, and it was like yeah. ten thousand uses to make up make up for like one. Yeah, this article. Tell said me about this crisis. Twenty it's thousand. Bad. It takes twenty thousand uses to offset 20, the Twenty thousand. Holy mother of God! So like, you would have to use your tote, your cotton tote, daily for fifty four years. Stop it. Ain't nobody have the, any cotton toe for 54 Nobody's years. Nobody's doing that. And it, it wouldn't even be possible to use it every day this for 54 is years. stupid that we have been sold that. Like it's people with good intentions, including what me. What do they call that? Greenwashing? Right. Like it seems like it's helping, but it's Is not. that the right term? It probably yeah. is. Yeah, okay. it is. Because there isn't a lot of regulation about even like the verbiage of organic versus natural versus cage free, whatever, all those words right. that you see on packaging, right. um, sustainable. We'll define that. What do you mean by that? Right. Um, and so people think they're doing the right thing, but then if you have 50 cotton tote bags, Mm-mm. there's no way you can offset their impact. Mm-hmm. Um, and they were like tracing it back to in 2007. There was a British designer named Anya Hindmarch who put the reusable cotton bag on the map. She had a bag that was a cotton tote, but it said, I am not a plastic bag. I bought one because it was so trendy and like, oh my gosh. you know, whatever. And basically that's what began this sort of like tote bag, whatever. Craze. Craze. Suze, we had that. We made them. Well, and they even mentioned the New Yorker tote in the article, which ah, I love. My I Yorker. love it. I know. And like, how you- are people going to know that I read the New Yorker when I go to the grocery store, though? Well, that's a thing. And companies love it, love the right. having the totes because it makes everybody a billboard. Anyone my brother had it. was walking around. Jordan. Jordan, my brother, walking yeah. around with a Lululemon tote bag. And I was like. It's like the red me. What you doing <laughs> over there with the Lululemon tote bag? It was a big one too. Well, they are nice. The red ones. Yeah. I mean, I know, but like, I was at like, least they're not cotton. Jordan, that this is true. That they're made from recycled. Okay, so what is the what is? They did tell say like more. if you use something from recycled plastic bottles, you know, like um, Rothy's has those, yes. and other places. Um, that it's it's better because at least you're reusing something that was already in existence to begin yeah. with. Whereas cotton requires a lot of resources like water to, you know, yeah. make into a textile. And the ink that they use um, on the bags makes it like so you can't compost it. Okay, so, here's what we need to do. We need to turn them into other things. I was thinking that. Like adorable, like zippered little makeup pouches. Nobody's cute. doing that though. Like that is super cute and great, but like, like people it would be are really so busy. Easy to do. We need to upcycle more shit. Yes, and I am so on board with it, and I really do try a lot to. My first go to is to see if I can get something used. Right, stuff like that. But me too. Busy. And I've had. Let me tell you some. This kind of changed subject, but some really good come ups at the Goodwill recently. What'd you get? I love it. So tell me. I got a silk Everlane t shirt, like like blouse, for freaking six dollars and ninety nine cents. <gasps> That's incredible. It's still in the store for eighty eight dollars right now. I'm so happy for you. Thank you. <laughs> Other thing I got, this is the crazy part too. I swear, I like totally manifested this. So when <laughs> uh, when Barry and I were on our like we were on a hike, and he was like, "I really want to find an antler shed, like a shed from a deer." You know how like they, the antlers like fall yeah. off. Yeah, and then and what so do you, you mean a shed? Them. Like that's what they that's what they're oh, called. Oh. <laughs> they're called an antler I shed. I thought you meant like, like a building. That's like okay. the antlers. Like that's what they're, they're called. So gotcha. he's like, "I really want to find one." And I was like, oh, we're totally going to find one. Hang on. Let me. And then we were like shit chatting or whatever. She does this whatever. all the time. Anything all, you say you need, Sarah will be like, we're going to find one. And yeah, then she's and I, right. 
<laughs> I get it. So I'm like, okay, wait, but hang on. I got to put my, and then we were walking for a little bit and I'm like, oh my God, I'm sorry. I'm not even in my, I didn't even like put myself in the mindset of like, hang on. I got to like really put sheds. it out there. And so like, I took a moment and I was like, okay, I'm, I need to get, I need to get this antler shed. Oh my God. It's a week later. I'm at the Goodwill walking around doing my thing. They wheel out a new cart and I turn around and there are two beautiful antler sheds at the frickin' Goodwill. That is it, ridiculous. Suze, it was like, oh, here you, you want one? Here you go. That's and then insane. I, I took a picture of it and I messaged Barry and I was like, well, I should have been. I, I, we weren't specific on how we asked for it. And he was like, oh my God. Was he dying? I can't believe you frickin' got. Because I made a net. You know how I do when I'm like. Hang on. I need to like, I'm going to get, okay, we're going to get this. And then we do. And hold on. I got to pour another glass of tea. Um, I noticed that you said, it must have been a couple years ago now, but that you had tried to manifest something, but then you were like, I wasn't specific enough and it came in a way I don't want. So now I noticed that you're like real precise. I get real precise. And so this time I didn't say how. I just said, I want to find one. And I was like, yeah, okay, you found one at the Goodwill. Suze, why that's amazing is because you can't sell antler sheds in the state of California because they... So the, I, remember I had an antler guy, a, a skull guy at the yeah. flea market, <laughs> oh, and he's not there anymore. Because and he gave me the whole speech on why they they don't he can't sell that stuff anymore because they want to not incur they want to uh, uh, deter people from hunting. Deter is that the right word I'm looking yeah. for? Yes. Um, so they 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 made it so you can't sell them in California, and why so do, they shouldn't they have even been there hunt? for sale. And they were like eight dollars a piece. I was like, that's Thank amazing. You. I got two full, and they look so good on my mantle. You know how wow. I'm like collecting dead things. So. I can't believe that. And I also don't understand why they wouldn't want people to hunt. In California, they don't have the problem with like deer and other things like that. Other, I swear I'm on airplane mode. I'm still getting calls. Who the fuck is calling me? Get out of here. But, you know, She's had it. Had it. Anyways. Well, yeah, but, people, yeah. I mean, they want people But that doesn't to hunt. stop me from having, wait, wait, look, a massive amount of antlers. Oh, my God. Antlers. If you're on Patreon, what and are you guys thinking of these? I have more. This is, this is an old oh, antique Lord. one from. Good night, Irene. It is like a taxidermist over there. Th- this, it does, it does kind of look like that. In my, I won't lie. And I was like, for somebody who, like. Doesn't right like isn't that I'm not into hunting at all. I have You're like almost and these are like vegan. Not new. I've had these for years. That like you know yeah. when Landon came over on a, a, one of our first dates, I had remember I had some skulls being uh, bleached and <laughs> in the bathtub. I had like skulls that I was removing the skin off of. Ugh. Could you imagine? I'm like I, for the right person, I I'm. Yeah, you're a the real right person. winner. For <laughs> anybody else, I'm a freaking psychopath. Well, if you're into kinky stuff or tame stuff, I have something for you, and that is called Dipsy, which yes. is a wonderful service that provides you with sexy stories, whatever you're into. Yes. So you go and you download Dipsy, and then you take this little quiz, and you tell them, like, what gets your motor running? And then they'll be like, well, we have a story for you. And then they'll give you some suggestions. Or you can just kind of like look around and see what you want. Um, They release new content every week. And they have something for everyone. Like I said, like if you just want something soothing to go to sleep and maybe have sweet dreams, you can get that. Or if you're like, I got to bang later and I got to get things Get the motors running. Yes. Yes. I'm into that. They can give you that too. They have wellness sessions, sensual bedtime stories, and soundscapes to help you relax, which is great. Doesn't that just really help us relax? That's what I'm saying. I mean... For listeners yes, of this show, Dipsy is offering an extended 30-day free trial when you go to dipsystories.com slash braincandy. That's 30 days of full access for free when you go to D-I-P-S-E-A stories.com slash braincandy, dipsystories.com slash braincandy. I love that. You're welcome. That's what God, I said. I love a sexy story. Um, I the voices. Uh, 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 what was Just I talking, talking about? Like oh, yeah. Anyways. Cotton tote bags. Totally different. 
Right. Um, Got way off subject. Yeah. Yeah. I like to know. So basically, it's not. We got to figure out uses for cotton tote bags. That's really <clears throat> like how many I wonder are there out there that? What's the ratio of cotton tote bags to people? Well, I mean, in the article it said the New Yorker has given out two million alone. Just the New Yorker. <gasps> so I know. And like I've been noticing, like I have more than I need. Um I use them, but like I have too many. So mm-hmm. it's a problemo. I was a person that saved plastic bags and reused those. And now yeah. I'm saving reusable bags and using those. It's recent it feels like the same thing. Kinda does. And like the reusables come in handy for sure. The plastic ones. Yeah. For like even just if you have pets. Yeah. Obviously. But oh, fucking A. We don't it's it doesn't look good for the future. No, no, I'm we're doomed. Saying. We're fucking doomed. <laughs> like I I mean we're just going to have fun until then. It's not going to be in our lifetime. It's fine. Like, <laughs> but, I mean, we're going to do everything we can to, like, not contribute more. Sure. And to try to, like, but, slow like, the shit like down. But, like, kind of like Kesarasra. You know, right. But, like, we are, it is, ooh, it's not good. Um, That's what I try to do that go back to, like. You know, half life in nature, half life. That's what I'm. That's my goal. That's all you can do. Half, uh, half in this world, half in the other. In the like utopian, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Um, I read a great article in the Atlantic about. It was actually about a family who lost their son in nine eleven, and you know we're twenty years out, God. and they were sort of exploring. Grief, memory, um, the the life that a person takes on after they're dead, right. all of those things through the lens of this story of 9-11. And, like, the two parents had totally different approaches. The, the mom, like, she really didn't want to focus on that day. She was more interested in, like, her son's life and, like, remembering him as a person. The husband really leaned into, like, the conspiracy theories of 9-11 and like he spends every day all day sort of like trying to solve this mystery of like what happened and stuff Uh which you know is a coping strategy whether you think it's a good one or not is a different matter but i think um, it's a very male coat like it doesn't surprise me that that right like i'm gonna solve this problem i'm gonna solve it yes and then part of it's like i'm gonna feel the focus of the um, article was about how, at the time, this man that died, he had a girlfriend he was about to propose to. And she um, she was sort of like a loose end because she wasn't the wife. She wasn't even the fiancé. She was the girlfriend. And the dad, at the time, gave her his final journal. Um, and she took it and liked it. And the mom was like, can you... Um, photocopy the pages at least so I can have them and the girlfriend said no and like wouldn't let her look at it or have it or even see it obviously the son's journal yeah and like the whole article you're like this is a villain who does that I don't know I feel like maybe he has the right if that's I mean he does have the right Okay, but right, okay, yeah. But um, at the time, before, like, they got mad about it, you know, right after they had the funeral and everything, and she gave a eulogy in which she said a quote that she said was from the journal where he had written about grief, and he said, life loves on. That was, like, the kind of, like, catchphrase of it. And so it became like a mantra for the family. Like the dad got it tattooed on him and the mom got a piece of jewelry with it engraved. And it became like this important idea of like, even when someone dies, life loves on. And Mm. then the journalist got the journal and got all the journals and was like, he just had like a quirky way of handwriting. It actually says life lives on. And like, he had to tell them like, just so you know, um, it doesn't say, but they were saying it doesn't matter that it doesn't. That's what the doesn't. quote truth of it 
isn't as important as like the idea of it and like the narrative the symbol. Yes. The intention. And it became so interesting to like think about the ways that we create our own narrative, our own truth, and then the truth of like who was in our life and all of that and how it's different for everybody. Everything. Yep. You know? Everything. We are, I was just having this conversation the other day that the more you learn about science about quantum physics about how what really happens the more you learn wow we are in control of our own reality and we can choose what we want to see and what we don't want to see and if something becomes a symbol that represents a concept or an idea And we add words to that and feelings and emotion and intention and all that. It becomes really powerful. It takes on a life of its own. For sure. We see this. And like the, this is the thing is like, these things are happening and we are just like, okay, uh, you know, yeah, sure. I'll like, you know, let my brain like default, like run wherever it wants to. It's using these tricks all the time, most of the time against us. And we got to jump in and be like, oh, wait a sec. Let me change my relationship with this. Like triggers and things that are like um, talisman or whatever you want to call it. Like a, a, a thing that represent like this phrase, this like a mantra. Are essentially the same, like two, en- two different ends of the spectrum. One that creates like negative feelings that gives you this like feeling of worry. And the other one that reminds you of positive things and puts you in the right mindset and controls, like makes you think the right kind of thoughts so that you can be happy, so that you can activate that ACC that we were talking about before that makes you creative. Puts it- it's all the same stuff. Woo! Yes. Yeah. And it's, you can think of it as scary that like there's no such thing as truth and like your reality is different from mine and they're both like that can be very scary to some people I think but it can also be like you're saying empowering because then you're in the driver's seat you are in the driver's seat and you can create those narratives and those understandings you're not at the mercy of some sort of like mystical universe thing no it also was pointing out like how memory fails us. Boy, I mean, if you don't know that from like true crime with the old like, I know he did it and it wasn't even him. Like the, uh, what do they call that? The lineup? Yep. Yeah. And that we think for sure. I, I'll give yep. you an example. Yesterday we went to Falling Water for, the, for our anniversary. Oh, that was I, beautiful, oh, by it, the way. It's stupid how beautiful it is. Susie, house inspo... Uh, the way that's done on the interior, like, you can definitely make that thing over the fireplace. I don't know how, but we're, we can make that happen. Right? We were, like, yeah. trying to get ideas because, you know, our house is weird. and I Totally. Like, I want it to be weird like that. Yes, that for sure. But I it have is. been there before, and I have memories of my time there and what yeah. I saw and the, um, the view from outside. Totally different than my memory. Wow. You know, and you just think... Well, that's weird. Did it change? Yeah. Probably not. <laughs> wow. It's, you know, and so our memories seem reliable, they're but not. but they're not, and that's okay as long as you're kind of aware of it and can accept that you might be wrong about some things. Or and what's the point? Like, I think it's important to ask why do we need to hold on to whatever memory it is in that specific way? You know, we get so much from being in the moment and being present that often the memories are where sometimes the pain or the attachment to a, a, I don't know, idea or, or expectation, all of that come from, and maybe letting go of the memories of, you know, like I've, I have said to clients and heard in my own therapy, like, are, is this an old tape? Is this from like or a reminder, the person you're with is not your ex. Because we'll just play those oh. like old tapes and old memories and things. So maybe letting go of the memories, you know. Yeah, like it's that thing. 
And uh, I think we should talk about it or whatever that Lori Gottlieb yeah. book is. Yeah. Um, maybe you should talk to someone. Yeah, maybe you should talk to someone about how, like, we we imagine we're being held captive in this pain, but, like, we're, like, going like this on the bars of the jail cell. We could just walk around it. Just walk right around. It's fine. Right? We believe. Yeah. We we're trapped, trapped in these old men. Yes. Yeah. Totally like that. And yep. this is everyone. All Everyone. <laughs> And we, that's what, like, it, I had that moment where I was like, wait a sec, in high school, was I really that, maybe it was just, like, normal? And if I could let go of that, of, like, I'm the weird girl yeah, like who, I was like, oppressed. I, yeah, and mm-hmm. people didn't like me, and instead focus on, like, you know, I recently heard about that, um, I can't remember the name of the whatever law that says we can really only manage five relationships, five close relationships. Have you heard this? No. Oh, my God, I thought we talked about it on here, so I didn't even bother writing it down. So I was like, whatevs. But maybe I should talk about this. My memory fails me, too. But, you know, and it it says, like, we can really only manage, like, five friendships. And I'm like, man, okay, so I had five friends. We're fucking good here, right? Yeah, book's solid. Yeah, dance card's full. What else? (laughs) Dance card. I love, like, antiquated sayings that, like, still hold up. It still makes sense. (laughs) They totally do. Dance card's full. (laughs) But, like, we do also create these mythologies about people that we love that have passed. And I don't know. It's just, it was, I think from the article, it was a healing experience. The girlfriend gave the journal back and was like, I'm so sorry. She's like, I just felt like I this is all I had because I didn't have... I wasn't married to him or whatever. This was all I had. And it was 17 pages. And they had been mad about it for 20 years, you know? So, like, you might be holding on to a pain that you needn't hold on to kind of thing. All the time. Yeah. It was a good article. Let's wind it down, Sarah. Let's. That good. (laughs) Good. Good episode. <laughs> you always say that. You're so nice. It no, makes me wonder, like, like do you prefer... This one, I felt like we just, like, covered some stuff, man. <laughs> I felt like I was in therapy. <laughs> Glad well, we learned. Sarah needed therapy after having eaten exclusively liver for a <laughs> portion of her childhood. My mom's going to be like, that's why you were reading before kindergarten. Guaranteed. Well, if you ask Sally right. what she's, she, she is right. Yeah. She's not There's wrong. There's some vitamin, vitamin A, vitamin something in K. it. D. K. It seems like one of those obscure ones that people are yeah. like, we're missing something it now. Like that. That's why we're like, all you need that iron, something like that. Isn't I enjoyed our deficient. conversation about how reality TV ruined us in completely opposite ways. Yeah. That was fun. <laughs> so super interesting. And Val Kilmer is a fascinating study of like aging. Yep. Star. Yep. Situation. I'm just uh-huh. waving to my neighbor, Jake, my nephew. <laughs> driving oh, up. Hey, I didn't hi. want the patrons to be like, why is she waving? Oh, hi, um hi. let's see. Oh, we talked about Barry the Owl. Yeah, oh R. I. P. All right. Susie Susie made me fall in love with something and then she <laughs> murdered Snatched it. Snatched it away. Cotton I might be bags. the one with all the skulls, but Susie's the one. The dead heart. <laughs> <laughs> that was funny. Uh, Sarah got antlers at Goodwill. Fantastic. My super good come up. Yeah. And I think that you guys might be in luck because I, I think that the um, shirt that I got is a little bit too big for me. So you might see this on Poshmark. You'll get a profit. For still... More than fifty percent off because I you felt like I got it for such it now a good deal. I the couldn't... episode comes out because then they'll be like, and she only paid six fifty for this. No, but also there's another one at po- like in there being sold for like a ton of money, and I was like, I feel bad even. Like, yeah. So like I put it at like twenty four bucks or something. You guys are gonna get it for a steal. <laughs> Don't forget to check out our merch to fund Sarah's goodwill habit. Yes, I need that. And um, our Patreon.com slash Brain Candy. And just subscribe. It means so much to us. Let us you know if you ever... You can watch the video version where maybe I hold up weird things that are in my room. Ha! <laughs> I can confirm that did happen. And we'll see you next time, everybody. Bye! Bye! Bye.